Commutify presents Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Each week, we explore the challenging issues transportation demand management professionals face on their journey to transition commuters from driving alone to more sustainable, shared and active commuting habits. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify. This is Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Hi, everyone, and welcome aboard to this week's Between the Lines podcast. I'm joined today by a special guest. I think we're going to have a pretty fun, interesting conversation today. We're joined by Mark Cleveland, who's the co-founder and CEO of Hitch Rewards, which is a mobility incentive platform that's helping communities and the planet motivate and measure a safer, greener, and smarter commute. So the Hitch Rewards program was launched in early 2018, and it captured over 13 million miles of shared ride data over just two years. Um, And we're going to be talking a little bit about what that means and some of the insights that have been formed from that, including uh, that it was featured in a US DOT report, um, which is really, really interesting. Uh, Besides all this great hitch stuff that that Mark does, he's also a a serial entrepreneur with a track record um, of success over 19 years uh, in the commercial transportation information system space. And uh, he brings this unique insight to the interconnected value and impacts of driver incentives, data, and multimodal movements. Mark, uh, we're really excited to have you on. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Andy. It's great. And I love, for those of you watching the video, I love that you always have a piece of art in the background. Did you want to tell us a sec of what that is? Well, that's my everyday inspiration. My wife painted that, and so uh, she's my Mona Lisa right there. I love it. It's ah, it's a great. It's really nice. It looks really nice. Everyone needs to tune into the video just so they can see it now. Um, perfect. So today we're talking about why direct mobility incentives are going to help save the planet. So to start off, that's a you know what does that mean? Can you tell us a little bit more, Mark? What is a you know what is a mobility incentive platform? What is a a cash incentive? What is Hitch Rewards? What is this space? Well, thanks for having me on. This is going to be a fun conversation. You know, we're talking about paying people to do the right thing, right? We're talking about identifying desirable preferred behavior and pricing that. And I'll, I'll be happy to describe how Hitch creates the marketplace for behavior change. Um, and obviously, my background with commercial transportation means that I have a an understanding of what the trucking company, the 3PL, the logistics companies are doing and how they're motivating drivers to, you know, uh, be optimally efficient and how mm. routing information works at this at scale across the United States. The system that I, I, I was responsible for and built uh, with my team had 70 percent of America's largest trucking companies in it. So I had yeah. for five years, I had all the dispatch data from Swift and U.S. Express and Schneider and and every major trucking company you see running down the road. Um, And and we were doing business process outsourcing for them. We were taking their field documents and and creating workflow systems that would drive billing, payroll, compliance documentation, et cetera. And in that process, you, you learn how do fleets at scale motivate the best behavior out of their drivers, everything from not sticking your foot into it to, you know, measuring and monitoring all the onboard uh, informatics systems. And then you, you cross that chasm into the car, into the, Mm -hmm. the, you know, the universe of the commuter. And I've been hearing for years uh, through middle Tennessee and all my leadership experiences about the difficulties in recruiting and the challenges with the commute and traffic is a problem. And I'm saying to myself, well, this can be solved. This can be solved actually not only am I so confident it can be solved, I'm just going to invest the next five or six years of my life in trying to do it. (laughs) And I'm just importing, quite frankly, highly tested, highly validated uh, commercial fleet management, behavior management techniques into uh, the daily commute where we have so much pain. Yeah. That's a really interesting perspective. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard that like origin story of, of, of hitch rewards. That's really cool. So, um, so you took this idea of how we incentivize 
you know, commercial right. truck drivers right. and bring it into the everyday, just like, how can we do the same thing for just me and you, regular Joe, driving our car? Exactly. And yeah. we, we, uh, we took a, a, a couple of significant leaps uh, that differentiate us from any of the other software platforms that, that are, are trying to solve in this, in this place. And um, one of those leaps is, you know, I just, I just don't do anything for a discount coupon at Target. Yeah. You can't motivate me, uh, you know, with an Amazon gift card for two bucks. Um, if, if, I, if I stop and think about, I've never had a business that I've operated that didn't have at its core incentives and rewards for the people serving customers, for the customers doing business with us. There's, there's just no such thing as an incentive-free universe. Um, yep. who goes to work without a paycheck? Nobody. Now, if I, if I, if I could hire somebody and pay them in discount coupons, I, I would do it, but it's not possible. It's unrealistic. It's just sort of the, it's the dressing on a, on, on, on a salad. It's not the good stuff you're eating in the salad, right? right. You, you gotta have, you gotta have something that motivates change. And frankly, cash is king. Uh, and anything short of that, you're just, you're just kidding yourself. No, I think that's a good point. Now I'll say, since I moved to Montreal, I realized there's no target up here in Canada and, uh, maybe a $2 <laughs> coupon to target. If they could build a target here, I would be happy to use it. Um, but I agree. Cash is the way to go. Um, so tell us a little bit more. Like what is, what is this idea? How does hitch work? You're actually giving people cash for Brian. Anything? We are. We, we are a financial transaction processing platform. We are primarily an app-driven technology. We don't put anything behind the firewall of the customer. We don't install and integrate with all the other systems. We actually believe there are tax advantages and there are just simplicity advantages that come from our, our process. I can deploy the hitch system in a day. Uh, I can put different rules in place that drive behavior across all the different distributed locations of a major manufacturer or a, a retailer or a mall. Um, you basically have to understand that Hitch is viewing the solution to congestion and to our environmental challenges and to our job placement and recruiting and getting people back to work. We're viewing this through the lens of it is a marketplace. It's an entire marketplace. So yeah. we launched, uh, originally we launched in 2015 with the idea that we uh, we created the first hitch, which was swipe right if you want to pair up with this person in carpool, swipe left if you don't. It was sort of a Tinder ripoff yeah. <laughs> applied to uh, carpooling. And, and it was successful, but the data was showing us that it was not the right problem to solve. And, and frankly, if it were the right problem to solve, then all of the matching systems out there would be radically more successful than they actually are in reality. So getting somebody paired up with somebody to share a commute actually isn't the problem to solve. The problem is to elevate the top of mind of sharing, carpooling, and it turned out the pandemic leaned into our strategy. We're not inter we don't introduce strangers. We we dumped that entire business plan uh, and in favor of our Hitch Rewards platform, which was a brand new platform. So think of my investment, Andy. We completely built the system. We 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 deployed it, thousands and thousands of users, uh, and we we decided to set it aside and start oh. over fresh with a brand new platform, which we launched in January of 2018. And from that moment until the end of 2019, generating, you know, 12 and a half million miles of, of shared ride data. Well, how do you do that? Well, we did it by communicating in the general marketplace, putting rewards on assets, like a reward on taking the bus, a reward on walking, a reward on sharing and on corridors and a reward that's tied to an origination and a, a reward that's tied to a destination. Imagine that our back office, our cloud decision-making reward engine in the sky is taking the app, the Hitch app data, and running it through 
an unlimited number of potential rewards from an unlimited number of potential sponsors that have an unlimited number of purely self-interested reasons why they're going to participate mm. in this program. And now we've accomplished a couple things that everybody wants. They want the behavior change without having to pay for it exclusively themselves. Well, the employer doesn't want to pay for it exclusively. The government doesn't want to pay for it exclusively. It, we're actually able to bring brands, sponsors, causes. We're, we're able to bring educational information to bear. And, and in these micro reward environments, share with the commuter who rewarded them, give them their gamification, give them their data. Oh, and by the way, they're individually contributing to the solution that we all want, which is an environmentally sensitive and a congestion-free future with optimal alternative transportation uh, choices being made by people who have those choices available to them. Uh, and my system says, okay, there's a choice here. There's not a choice here. You're a single occupancy vehicle. Great. We're going to we're gonna work with you as a single occupancy vehicle and educate you along the way on how you can share and what's in it for you. Because the what's in it for you is the cash payment and the increase in rewards. We, um, we distribute that cash to you. You take that cash out of the Hitch app and put it in your PayPal account and off you go. Wow. That's, that's such an interesting idea. I mean, I think this is a really cool cool thing. And we're going to get to, um, towards the end here, the, the benefit to society of this, you know, real uh, verifiable data that's going to be collected. But before this, we were talking a little bit about, uh, you mentioned something said, we treat uh, drive alone vehicles as an asset, not a villain. I think that's interesting. The TDM space loves to treat drive alone vehicles as a villain, but why, why do we treat it as an asset? What does that mean? Well, in the case of Nashville, there's 300,000 cars a day that drive to the city. Um, that is a transportation network. There's just one person in them. They don't think about, it's not top of mind for them to think about sharing. They know friends and neighbors and coworkers. They are comfortable with some of them, uncomfortable with others. Yep. They, they love their car. They hate their car because it needs to be replaced. It's a 1972 Plymouth, whatever, yep. <laughs> whatever the truth of your, of your commute is to you. Um, if you, if you don't think about sharing, then you won't share. And all the education about alternative transportation and all the, all the, the strategies that have been deployed to date are failure strategies. They just are. Um, and I, I know that's kind of a bold statement, but what you what you look at from a marketing perspective is if there's 6% of the people that are carpooling, I need to turn the 6% of those people into rabid evangelists, yep. reward them for doing good, capture their data, know for absolute sure who's engaged, who's, who's a, who's a, uh, a sage of, of that experience. Did they quit their job and go to another job? Did the carpool break up for all these different, nobody has any real data. Everybody has estimates and small studies, but no one has real time, verifiable, evidential data. And that's what we start our mission around is collect verified true data that you can make decisions from. And by the way, that data has to be collected at all times. And, and there's a sensitivity to people's personal data we obviously are responsible for your PII and protecting that. But you are, as a Hitch user, selling your data to us, to the sponsors, in exchange for them pushing a message that educates you, in exchange for them being able to make better public uh, infrastructure asset deployment decisions. We're all... Uh, aware that the data exists and that and, and there's a lot of data on all of us, but you're not getting paid for any of it unless you yep. hit, right? So we just said, all right, these models of taking people's data and making money on it should be flipped around and given the money should be given to the people who do the work, uh, the hard work of finding alternative transportation and changing their behaviors. Uh, we took the idea of big systems deployed behind firewalls inside major corporate structures and said, how am I going to deploy something like that for a 200 person um, leather manufacturer? How are we going to, how are we going to actually let the restaurant worker, the hotel worker, 
the 300,000 different types of jobs that come to Nashville, how are you ever going to get at them one employer at a time? You're not. Well, that's a failure strategy. It's, it's the way that we get to where we are. I get that. But that's not the way we should behave going forward. And so we've created the platform that is the market maker. And our customers, for example, they'll come in and they'll say, hmm, this corridor is super highly congested. This corridor is not. I'm going to put a single occupancy vehicle reward on this corridor. I'm going to know you individually, communicate with you individually, pay you for your data and constantly educate you about how the other corridor is available and it pays you three cents more per mile. Huh. Well, I, you know, if I've got time, I'm going to take the other corridor. If I don't have time, I'm going to make some choices. Eventually, I'm thinking about my choices and I'm getting paid for the smarter mobility decision. It's ridiculously inexpensive compared to a $30 million interchange. We all know we're not getting any more infrastructure. <laughs> we're all fighting knife death battles over trying to fund transportation. <laughs> and in fact, we still have congestion in the pandemic, uh, ongoing pandemic, we have congestion. And now we've done something worse, Andy. We've given people an emotional excuse to yeah. drive alone because now I'm not safe if I take some other more exposed mode of transportation. So we're going to have single occupancy vehicles for a long time. So stop treating them like the villain. Lean into that as a source of data. All the decision makers I know in important places of change agency in all of these state DOTs and in these city DOTs and in these TMAs, they all want to see change for the right reasons, but they don't have the data. And some of the data they have is just sort of a set it and forget it. Like, yep. yeah, I, I commute Monday, Wednesday, Friday with a friend. And uh, they do that even when they're on vacation. It's just bad data. So uh, we just, I think we flipped, Hitch flips a whole bunch of models on their ear. Um, we, we realize there's a problem. Your listeners know there's a problem. Yep. They may need more data on sizing the problem and maybe strategically how are they going to attack it. I get that. But we leap over that and just go right to the what's your, what's your goal? So if your goal is to move parking from this area to this area, uh, put an incentive over here. And I, I guarantee you I can put a bigger incentive over here for Lipscomb University in one of their five satellite parking areas, and I can show you how they move. And then we put an incentive on the, on the, on the shuttle, and, and I can show you how they move. Um, so incentives work. They always work. It's the only thing that works. So why why ignore the fact? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's I mean, a couple of reasons why. Like, I really like this approach. One is we're actually paying people to you know be with or interact with the system. Whether that's like I love the idea of let's actually pay people to do the thing we don't, actually don't really want them to do. So then we can convince them that we're going to pay them more to do the thing we do want them to do. It makes, I mean, it makes perfect sense. That's such a like brilliant idea. Uh, I, mean, I love it. <laughs> you got to meet them where they are. I mean, it's, it's true for every leader listening to this podcast, you meet your people where they are and you bring them along in this journey to something better, whatever your mission is. My mission, my why is less about saving the universe, right? Um, Every 50 miles that you track while you're hitching, we plant a tree. So anybody Amazing. in the United States, anywhere, anytime, right now, can drive 200 miles on their vacation out and back and have planted several trees just by tracking their trip with hitch. Now, they didn't get any cash because no one's paying them to go to Yosemite. <laughs> but they have moved. They have emitted. This is their chance, your chance to... Uh, plant a tree when you're doing what you have to do. And many people have to go to work. My why is helping people get to jobs and critical services, creating the universe where the car, which dominates our mobility in orders of magnitude that make it sort of silly for anybody to argue yep. against that point, right? So if the car is king and people like to drive alone, then meet them where they are and bring them forward into this universe 
where they are making smarter mobility decisions because you brought them along in that journey. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And, and you're actually paying people to do it. I and mean, this is such an, it's, it's so great because you're actually having the people there um, in the journey with you, but you're not just encouraging them to do it for the you know betterment of society. You're actually saying, and, and by the way, you, you make some money doing this as well. I mean, what's going to turn that down? <laughs> That's great. So, okay. So, um, one of the things you've touched on a lot is this idea of by by encouraging people to track their trips to to hitch um, and to get paid for hitching, they actually are contributing to some bigger data set that we can use. Can you talk to me a little bit more about um, how that data is being used, how it's been used in the past, uh, maybe about this DOT report we mentioned earlier? Yeah, we're super excited about um, some of the findings. And we decided last year during the pandemic that we would publish some of our findings from our 13 million miles of transportation. Yeah. Um, we, we know now what it takes to get somebody to share a ride. We know what it takes to get somebody to uh, to hitch. Um, we're, we've created mentoring programs for some of our clients, which is just fabulous. I mean, um our customers can take the morning commute and turn it into a productive culture building experience. They can solve transportation problems for their transportation challenged. They can bring the first 90 days of employment where your turnover is the highest and they can get a mentor in the vehicle. And I can pay the 90 day employee five cents a mile and I can pay the transportation starved employee uh, 10 cents a mile. And now both of those employees have an incentive, a personal incentive to scour their network to find somebody who is a friend, a neighbor, a coworker inside their COVID bubble who they trust, who they can take and go with to work, where they're going to share some common workspaces and some common environments. And, you know, let's not diminish the impact of the, of the pandemic, but let's also not give it an excuse for us to stop advancing towards what we know we need to do. We need to turn every vehicle out there into two passengers, not six, not 12, not a van pool, not a freight train. We need to turn them into two passenger vehicles where culture can be built. So the mentor gets 20 cents a mile. Well, great. It's below their cost of transportation, so it's not income. It's cash in their bank. And the mentor is now getting 20 cents a mile to take a mm -hmm. new employee to work. Now, that's a pinpoint solution that our rules engine can drive. You can offer it to all your employees, no problem. You can offer it to just the employees that are delivering on your mentoring and culture building project. Um, those are a couple of examples of, of how rules can be applied. And I think that's where people don't always understand what we've accomplished. Um, so about these these pieces of data, when the data rolls up, you see the traffic, you see the behavior, you actually have a direct relationship with that commuter and you're the greater Nashville regional council. You're yes. responsible for all of our MPO future spending on infrastructure and our social programs, et cetera. And you're, you're able to, you're able to interact with and modify the movements on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, and you do it by establishing what you value and we know that we value the bus. We wouldn't subsidize bus transportation at the level we do, what, $14, $15, $20 dollars per trip. Uh, with ridership down, who knows what those numbers are today yeah. if you're doing it on a per trip basis. So we, we know that it's valuable to society to have bus transportation networks, and we're paying 20 bucks per trip to get that subsidy and get it functionally operationally. Um, that's the value of a passenger yep. by definition. So what's a passenger worth? Passengers are worth a lot. Let's create more passengers. How do you do that? Well, you create an incentive system for people. Now, it's not about just giving up your car. You're probably going to have a car and be a passenger once in a while. I see those statuses. I see people trading off. I see that all in the real-time data. And that can roll up and it can roll up to the Greater Nashville Regional Council, which can look at the entire road network for Nashville, all of it, all the future plans, everything they're planning to do. They can overlay corridor rewards, destination rewards, construction speed limit rewards. They can overlay origination rewards in areas that have 
let's say, low socioeconomic performance, and they can direct, they can drive shared ride behavior, helping people get to work, and I can prove to them that they went to a job center. Hmm. So you overlay, just imagine that the mobility framework, the options of all mobility in that framework can be laid on a map geofenced and geodesigned and priced. And then whenever somebody does exactly what you want them to do on Monday at 6 a.m., starting here, going there, and ending here, that is our magic. That's our technology. That's our our patent is involved in some of that activity. But my point being, it scales. It scales like that. And it can be dynamic pricing, and it can be fixed pricing, and it can be individually tailored to the condition of the participant. So the condition being a mentor and a leader in your company, the condition being uh, somebody that just does not make enough money to have reliable transportation, the condition being I'm a brand new employee and and the company really wants to make that a sticky experience. Uh, Or the condition being, as, as we learned in the city of South Bend project, the condition being I don't live anywhere near uh, mass transit option, and I have these other problems, and I have a job. And so, you, the condition is I'm in a program that helps me get jobs. So mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of real positive power in the data, and and uh, it's just a whole new. Well, there's nobody doing anything like what we're doing, and we're excited about it. I'm excited about it. This is really cool. I like. I hope our listeners are really thinking. I mean. While you were talking, I was thinking of like five different use cases. Where I was like, wow, this should be here. We should be paying people to take the bus to increase ridership, to get more bus you know, users to increase our transit uh, system. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. I love, I love it. <laughs> yeah, think, about, think about a bus network where I know you're on the bus and I'm paying you an re- incentive to return to the bus. Yep. You're, on, you're in a car. You're on the same route. I literally can geofence the routes, do the marketing project, determine who's actually a candidate for mass transit, and educate those people about the opportunity that they're missing to be in the bus and to get some of their time back and, and, and pull themselves out of the frustration of traffic. Yeah, I love it. All right, Mark. I mean, this is, I feel like we could talk for another, you know, two hours, <laughs> but I don't think people will necessarily want to listen to us for two hours. Maybe we'll have you back on. We'll do another one and then they'll listen to us again. But we're getting to the end of time here, so uh, like we do every week, let's let's kind of give a good summary here. Um, in a few sentences, can you just tell us a little bit more about why these direct mobility incentives are important, why the why and why they will help save the planet? Well, paying people to do what you want them to do is the most effective decision you can make. Period. Um, if you have an unlimited budget, we're going to build unlimited roads, but we have we have limited space, limited budgets. And, uh, and we, we, we're not solving this problem with more infrastructure in most cases. So we have to change the way we use our infrastructure and we have to do a better job of rewarding people for doing things that we've invested so heavily in, um, and which includes paying them to stay at home. Our, our, our application you know, tracks and rewards you if you stay at home and you're a part of a telecommute program. Um, I, I would say that pricing the passenger is critical uh, flexibility in that pricing is important. You don't pay the same on weekends unless you're a, a manufacturer that has a weekend shift and you need your people to show up before 8 a.m. on the yeah. weekend. You know, you use all those use cases and you run through it and, it, and it's pretty pretty powerful. Um, you're planting a tree every 50 miles you hitch. You're possibly getting rewards in, in the form of cash, depending on the market you're in. Here in Nashville, we're launching our program with a half a million dollars in cash. Um, paid to uh, the general public when they do the things that the Greater Nashville Regional Council and our our regional leaders have determined they want to do. Hmm. So we're in, we're injecting technology and transit. That's the program. A half a million dollars a year for the next two years is the funding. Uh, corporation funding on top of that because we do all the reward stacking and sharing, so we can spread the burden out. We can change we can change pricing. Uh, on demand or based on dynamic uh, rule sets. And, and if you have that flexible of, 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 an, of a tool set in front of you, then you have to ask yourself, okay, I've got a great fork and I've got a great knife. Um, which meal am I eating? 
You know, yep. what, what, what am I what am I actually trying to accomplish? And so where, where I find people have the greatest challenge is, well, how do you pay for those rewards? Well, we got it paid for by a federal highway funded surface transportation block grant. It's uh, part of a $10 million set aside. Um, and if we're successful with this, we expect that to continue into the future. This is a two year project. And um, we're seeing other regions and other cities and other employers get behind it and jump in. So we're going to create a marketplace solution, not put all the burden on major employers. And we're going to make it with open APIs and uh, open uh, approach to data. And we're going to pay people for participating and pay people for their data. That's the summary. I mean, uh, I suppose... If you, if I would say our, our strength is that we have a very, we've spent a lot of time um, with a direct consumer support. Just imagine yeah. all the people who commute from all the different walks of life, from all the different employers and, and circumstances. We, we've gotten real good at direct consumer support. And we got an app that's so simple. And we don't bombard you and crush you with email marketing and all the other stuff that's out there. So you got to res- you got to you got to respect that we're not tracking people all the time. We're tracking you when you want to be tracked and we're rewarding you when you do things that people think have value. And in that environment, we've set the table, we put the plate in front of you, we've given you the tools and now you can choose between steak or a salad or both. But you can do anything you want with a rule set and an environment that's that flexible. That's awesome. I, this is exciting. I'm excited to see this project in, in Nashville, see where this goes beyond it. And make, it seems like there's applicability all over. I mean, this is great. Um, the app has to be simple. I mean, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be the user interface and the user experience has to be celebratory and has to be ridiculously simple. And yet I interface with the EPA database and I tell you what your individual vehicle emissions are. We, we, we do uh, so many things that are sophisticated, deceptively sophisticated, but right. simply presented. Yeah, no, it's great. It's really cool. Uh, so, Mark, I mean, it's been great to have you on. We have one final question for you. So right. stick around, right. stick yeah. around. But before, before I do that, I do need to give, my, you know, give the pitch to everyone listening and, and watching. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to it. Give it a like, give it a rating. Uh, it really does help. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to our email list at betweenthelines.io. Uh, we'll send more information uh, every week about what's going on in our podcast. That said, we have one final question here, Mark. So we're building out this music playlist for everyone. Uh, we're populating that with songs from our guests. What would you like to add? Wow, that's a really great idea. Um, we were talking about this earlier and. I got to tell you, I'm a big Santana fan. Yes. <laughs> I think I think every fun commute's got to have a great guitar riff. Yeah. And uh, shout out to our partners at Commutify and our, our team that made this possible, um, where we, we have the opportunity to, to share, uh, celebrate, you know, the changes in transportation and my team won the Emerging Company of the Year award, and we got a guitar for that. So this is a salute to all the guitar players out there, Rich included. <laughs> Our friends at Commutify, who are we have a partnership with, we respect what you do and the importance of data analytics and, and your value, the value you place on accurate, great data. Um, we, we, want, we want to be great artists in the music of the daily commute. God, I couldn't have put it better myself, Mark. I knew having you on would be great. We, you, we get the song going. We get the guitar out. Uh, the Oregon shirt. I mean, we'll be rooting for Oregon this year. Go Ducks. In the Pac-12. Yeah, go Ducks. Mark, it's been great. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody, for participating in the solution that uh, is going to have a, a more secure future and planet for all of us. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify.